Hey, good morning. Good to see you today. Good to see you this beautiful morning. How's everybody doing? Come on in. We're starting. We got people coming in still. That's okay. Hey, good morning. Good to see you. Welcome to Mosaic Church. Those of you joining us online, welcome. We are so, so glad that you're here this morning. The mission statement here at Mosaic Church is that we are a Christian family committed to moving people from doubt and despair to faith and hope through a relationship with Jesus Christ. So it's good to see you this morning. Just a couple quick announcements before we, we begin. Next Sunday is family night. It's kind of crept up on me this month, but last Sunday of the month is always family night. Right here at the church at 5 p.m., we're going to have pizza, we're going to have games, we're going to have a good time. And the best part of it is everybody's invited. Everybody's invited. We want to see you. We want to see you. So it's going to be just a good time next Sunday at 5 p.m. Put it in your calendar, family night, some fellowship, some fun right here at the church. We hope you can come out. Um, and want to get real quick here, I want to show you our website. Do we have that pulled up, Carla? I want to show you our website because Carla, and she's done such a good job designing our website. Um, and it, and this, this computer is crazy. It's hard to pull things over, but you can go on your phone, mosaicnazarene.org. You can go on our website at your computer at home. But what we've done is we've made it really easy to volunteer because we want to get everybody connected. We want to get everybody volunteering, serving, connected. And even if we can't see it here, you can go to it on your phone, mosaicnazarene.org. And we've got a big button that says volunteer. You can click it, and it just has a little form you can fill out in the areas that you might be interested in volunteering. So uh, we're just trying to get everybody connected, everybody volunteering. So uh, if there's a gift or a passion that God has given you, and we're going to talk about that today in my message, uh, we want to make sure that we make it easy and accessible to get involved here at Mosaic Church. So uh, that's okay. That's okay. But uh, if, you're not a, if you're not a website person, you can always come talk to me in person. But just to make it easy and accessible, we got that on our website. So there it is. There it is, volunteer. And if you go on your phone at mosaicnazarene.org, you can see it right there as well. So, okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, well, it's good to see each of you today. Do I have anything else, Carla, on the, on the slides, announcements? Um, wonderful, wonderful. Well, as always, mosaicnazarene.org, we've got everything up there on our website. Hey, it's good to see each of you today. Let's worship our risen Lord and Savior this morning. There is a uh, scripture I want to share with you right now. Would you stand for the reading of this scripture? It's just one verse. I'll read it, and then we'll all read it together, okay? Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise Him. Read with me. Praise, praise the, the Lord, Lord. How, how good, good it is to sing praises to our God. God. How, how pleasant, pleasant and fitting to praise Him. Him. He reigns. Is the song of the redeemed rising from the African plain? Is the song of the forgiven drowning out the Amazon rain? The song of ancient believers filled with God's holy fire. It's every tribe, every tongue, every nation. A love song born of the grace of the It's all God's children sing glory, glory.
to the King of glory and light. To the King of glory and light, all praises to the only giver of life, our Maker. The gates are open wide. See what love has done, amazing. He bought us with his blood, our Savior. The cross has overcome, we worship you. We shout, Hosanna, Jesus, he saves. Shout, Hosanna, he rose from the grave. special video. Enjoy it. Shalom to you all. Shalom. Shalom. You were speaking Egyptian. I lived there when I was a boy. Why were you there? We had to leave Bethlehem when I was two years old because of Herod. He you lived in Bethlehem? During the massacre of the innocents? I did. I know the story. Herod had every child in the area under the age of two killed. Yes. That was very sad. Not to spoil this beautiful day or anything, huh? <laughs> Come on. It's a leper. Stay back. Cover your mouth. Don't breathe his air. Don't come any closer. It's okay, John. It's okay. Rabbi, 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 you can't handle this disease. You Please. Please. Please don't turn away from me. I won't. Lord, if you are willing, if you can make me clean, only if you want to, I submit to you. My sister, she was a servant at the wedding. She told me what you could do. I know you can heal me if you are willing. Be cleansed. 
Seek your own honor. Please just do me this one thing. Uh, but what do I tell people? Go. Show yourself to the priest. Let them inspect you and see that you are cleansed. Make the proper offering in the temple as Moses commanded. And go on your way. Uh, uh. Who has an extra tunic? Just one of you, just one of you. That's enough. <sighs> Green is definitely your color. <laughs> Not too shabby. <laughs> Jesus. 
touch in our lives today and the reminder that though we might be outcast like the leper there's room in your family for us now bless the children as they move from this place into their children's church give them a great time visiting and learning about you may your kingdom come and will be done in this church building today amen Try to speak God's handiwork inside of me. With tear filled eyes, I cannot see His face. I feel His love surrounding me, and I hear Him say, Come unto me, my child, I'll never leave your side. I am. When we see the story of Jesus healing the man with leprosy like we just saw, we're reminded that God can and does the impossible all the time. You know, leprosy back then was kind of like a death sentence, kind of like the plague, you know, if you got it, then stay away. 
you know, very painful. But as we saw there, Jesus does the impossible. And it just reminds us as we gather here as the church today to be reminded that God can and does the impossible. We're not just talking about healing, physical healing. We're talking about all types of healing, all types of restoration. And sometimes we get to a place where it just feels like there's an impossible task in front of us, an impossible obstacle in front of us that's bringing us down, that's causing us doubt, that's causing us fear, that's causing us depression. But we know that Jesus can and does the impossible. And as we go to the Lord in prayer today, these altars are open. These altars are always open during our worship. Come before the altar, pray in your seats, but let's be reminded today as a church that whatever it is we're going through in our lives, Jesus is there, like we just sang, walking right next to us, and God can and does the impossible. Let's pray. Father, we bow before you, and we know we are reminded that you do the impossible. You heal leprosy. You heal us today. You restore us, you save us, you forgive us, you make us clean. Father God, we give you thanks. Just like Jesus made the man with leprosy clean, you make us spiritually clean. So God, even though maybe we've messed up this week, maybe we've made some mistakes, maybe we've fallen into some sin this week, God, you make us clean. We repent, we turn around, we turn towards you, God, you make us clean. You make us clean. We don't live with guilt and shame. Even though it's in our heads, we don't have to live with it because you've made us clean. You've healed us. You've restored us. We thank you, Jesus. And I pray, God, this morning, we pray if if there's somebody in here this morning, God, who's dealing with an impossible task in front of them, God, whether whether it's physical healing or, or whether it's something else, God, we're reminded that you do the impossible. So we pray this morning, God, that you would allow us to place our full faith and trust in you, knowing that you can and do the impossible in our lives. Heal us, free us, restore us this morning, God, as we worship you. Prepare our hearts for communion, Lord. Prepare our hearts to remember, to dwell on, to celebrate what you've done for us on the cross. Forgive us our sins. We repent and we turn away from those things. We turn towards you, Jesus, only you. We remember the cross. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. The Bible tells us that while the disciples were eating, Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat for this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me, the body of Christ broken for you. Then Jesus took a cup and when he given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me, the blood of Christ poured out for you. Amen. Let's worship. Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. The 
would you please stand to sing this, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Lion and the Lamb. Hey, good to see each of you this morning. Real quick, if you're new, if you're visiting, we especially want to welcome you. So glad that you're here. If you haven't filled one of these welcome cards out yet, they're in the seat pocket in front of you. Please fill one out if you haven't yet. Drop it in our offering box right here on the wall. We'd love to connect with you. We'd love to get you connected. So good morning. It's good to see you today. You know, uh, I just got through moving houses the last couple of days. Isn't that exciting? And, uh, you know, we only moved about a mile, but it's hard, to, it's hard to believe the amount of work and effort that goes into moving just a mile away. It's just, it's just absolutely crazy. But I was reminded this week how much I really dislike carrying furniture. <laughs> and uh, it's strange because I don't mind going to the rec center and lifting weights, you know, but when it comes to carrying furniture, there's, it's your hands, it's your back, there's a lot of 
sharp objects, and it's, it's just something that I don't enjoy. Uh, I don't know, but moving furniture uh, over the past couple of days, it reminded me of a time many years ago when I was, at, I was attending another Nazarene church, and uh, somebody came up with the bright idea of having a, a moving ministry, a ministry that would help people move. Um, specifically, the idea was that the ministry would help college students move into their new dorms or new apartments, and then the idea is that would give the church the opportunity to invite them to a barbecue at the church and connect with them. So it sounds like a really great outreach idea, doesn't it? But uh, until you've carried a solid oak entertainment center up three flights of stairs, you know, because it, it, everybody lives on the third floor, right, in the apartments, it's like, it's not so fun. You know, I don't think this ministry is one I ever actually signed up for, by the way, but somehow, you know how it works, somehow I got involved with it, and uh, there was always a little bit of dread. You know, you, you get the phone call, there was always a little bit of dread, oh, somebody needs help moving. It's like, oh, man, I just helped somebody move yesterday. I'm sore, you know. I don't know. But let me tell you something that I found a little bit interesting during, during this whole thing that I did. This is what I found really interesting I experienced so much joy by being involved in this ministry. Now, it sounds kind of crazy. It sounds kind of crazy, but when you're involved in the church, when you become a part of God's mission, even though you're, you know, even though you're working, even though you're doing labor, maybe you're doing labor for the church, it, it doesn't feel like typical labor like at a job. It doesn't feel like work as usual. It feels like joy. And so I look back to that period of my life, and yes, there was always dread when I'd have to go move furniture because I really didn't enjoy doing it, but I always experienced so much joy. Why? Because there's nothing better, there's nothing more spiritually impactful than watching God use the labor that you've worked to bless people, to change people's lives, to get them into the church, to invite them to church, to minister to them, to watch them find Jesus. Um, and that's the big thing that we're going to talk about today. And it, this whole moving thing the last couple of days just really reminded me of that. And the big thing we're going to talk about today, and if, you're, if you haven't been with us the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about different spiritual practices, different uh, spiritual habits, different things that we do that bring us closer to God. And today we're going to talk about serving. Today we're going to talk about the fact that God has all, given all of us spiritual gifts. God has given us all spiritual gifts, and he's called us to use those gifts to benefit the church. Um, and I'm convinced that we need to shift our thinking. We need to shift our thinking. Church is not a place that we go to. Church is a family that we are a part of. Church is not a place that we go. Church is a family that we are a part of. Sometimes in our heads, we subconsciously view church as a place that we go. I do it, you do it, we all do it sometimes. We look at church as a place that we go instead of thinking along the lines that church is a family that we are a part of. You know, we've been talking about different spiritual practices over the last few weeks. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about prayer and how God uses prayer to work in our lives. Last Sunday, we talked about reading through scripture and how God uses reading his word to speak to us and to grow us closer to him. And we look at those two spiritual practices, and, we th and, and those, are all, those are kind of obvious, right? It's like, well, obviously God works through prayer. Obviously God works through reading his word. Well, I'm going to talk about one today that maybe doesn't sound super spiritual at the offset. Um, maybe you won't instantly look at serving as a spiritual practice like prayer, like reading scripture, but I want to, I want to make a case today that serving using those gifts that God has given you, volunteering at the church is so significant. And God actually uses that to grow us closer to him. Maybe you've heard the word discipleship, becoming more and more like a disciple of Jesus. And oftentimes the way that we do that is through prayer, through reading God's word. But I'm convinced that an equally important way that God works in our lives is when we engage in God's mission. When we serve the church, when we volunteer at the church, when we get involved in God's mission. Um, and maybe volunteering in church, it doesn't sound super spiritual, like prayer or like reading God's word, but I would argue that it actually is. It actually is. If we're not serving the church, if we're not involved in the life of the church, I believe that we are missing out 
on the joy that God gives us when we are using our spiritual gifts to work alongside him in what God is doing in our church and in our community. I'm going to read a verse out of 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Here's what the Bible tells us. It says, So, my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord. Check this out. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. You know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. So we know that this was being written as an encouragement to the church. Maybe some of them were feeling weary. You know, back in the early church, they sacrificed so much, didn't they? They sacrificed so much to get the church going, to follow Jesus, to build the church. And many of them were viewed as social outcasts by getting involved in, in, in the church. They, they poured their heart out. They poured their soul out. They poured out their, their time and energy into building the church. And maybe they felt weary. Maybe you felt weary before as you've served the church week in and week out. I've felt that way before. But here's the truth. It's right there in verse 58. Nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Why is that? When you serve and are involved in the church, you are making a difference that goes way beyond anything you can imagine. There are people who have put their blood, sweat, and tears, and wallets into getting this building put together. Anybody in here or a part of that? Getting this building put together. You know, and I was told, somebody told me this, literal blood was shed when the guys were putting the building together. Literal blood was shed. You know, maybe it was a nail. I don't know what it was. But uh, getting this building put together. I mean, but why? Why did they go through all the effort? to put up this building in the middle of the desert, the middle of the desert. Was it because they liked building buildings in the middle of the desert? Do they enjoy it? Maybe some of them do. I don't know. Maybe some of them do. No, because this is a place where people can come and worship God and find Jesus. This is a place where people come and their lives are changed. And that's that's why they did it. That's why they did it. When you serve the church, you know you're making an eternal impact. The folks who were a part of putting this building together and financing it, they know that they're making an eternal impact in people's lives. And every time we get new people coming to the church, every time we baptize somebody, we're making a lifelong and eternal impact in their lives. That's why serving the church is so important. The Bible tells us nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. I think that's what it means when it says that. Anytime you're working for the Lord, anytime you're serving the church, you are making a lifelong difference in people's lives. My hope is that this building is here for many years, many decades into the future. Think about, just imagine all the people that are going to filter in and out of this building over the next several decades. God is going to use it over and over and over again to work in people's lives, to change people's lives, to bring people to Jesus. And that makes an impact that goes way beyond this life. It goes into eternity, right? And that is why the Bible tells us that nothing we do for the Lord is ever useless. Maybe you go to work and maybe your boss tells you to do something that feels pretty useless. Maybe maybe you've experienced that before. Nothing we do for the Lord is ever useless. Um... How many of you were raised in church, and you, maybe, maybe specifically you were raised in Sunday school or children's church, and maybe there was a teacher, maybe there was a volunteer at the church who helped out with the kids' ministry with Sunday school, and maybe they said something to you that totally changed your life. They didn't realize it was going to totally change your life, but, but maybe right now, you're sitting here right now today, you can remember back to something a Sunday school teacher said to you or a children's worker at the church said to you, and it just totally changed your trajectory with church. Now, if that person hadn't been volunteering that day or that person wasn't volunteering in that role, serving in that role, maybe you never would have heard that. But because you did, it made an eternal impact. It made a lifelong impact on you. Nothing we do for the Lord is ever useless. And there's a concept that we see in the Bible that we're going to talk about today 
There's a concept that we see in the Bible called spiritual gifts. And really what we're talking about is different gifts and abilities and skills that God has blessed you with. We all have different personalities. We all have different strengths. We all have different skills and passions. And God wired you a certain way. And, and, and God wants to use the way that he wired you to serve and benefit the church. That's a very biblical concept. And what the Bible says, we're going to read it in Romans chapter 12, what the Bible says is if God has given you a gift, then you should use it. I'm going to read verses 6 through 8. Here's what the Bible says. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing, different, for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. Verse 7. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. All right, so let's rewind. Go back to verse 6. Go back to verse 6. Most likely, you already know most of what you're good at, right? You've lived a few years, and you know, for the most part, what you're good at. Maybe you've even prayed through this, and you know what your spiritual gifts are. The Bible says in verse 6, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. Maybe you already know what those are in your life. But sometimes God surprises us, doesn't he? Sometimes God surprises us, and, and, and maybe you begin serving in, in a particular area of the church, and you think, this is not my gift. This, is, this, this surely is not my gift, but, but maybe you start serving in a certain role, and you think, well, I kind of like this. You ever, as you've experienced that before, you start serving in a role. You never saw yourself in that role before, and you start serving in that role. You think, oh, I kind of like this. I'm kind of good at this. I enjoy this. God is using me here. Maybe you've experienced that. Sometimes God surprises us. I had a Sunday school teacher one time tell me, you know, they told me, you know, I'm kind of quiet. I'm kind of reserved. I've always been that way. I never saw myself as being a Sunday school teacher. And they said, but, you know, God has given, God has given me this ability to do it. And, and, and the Sunday school class was growing and thriving but they never saw themselves as a Sunday school teacher until God pushed them to do it. And then all of a sudden, their group was thriving. They were enjoying it. God was using them. That's a spiritual gift. When we're following Jesus, when the Holy Spirit is reigning in our lives, there's, God just pulls out those gifts and abilities that he's already given us, and he's called us to use those for the church. God has given us certain gifts for doing certain things well. And that's because God works within us. God develops those gifts he's already given us. All right, so verse 6 here talks about, it says, uh, it says, if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. What does that mean? You know, when we, that's a word we don't use that much nowadays, right? But when you hear the word prophesy, maybe you think back to the Old Testament, you know, you think back to the prophet Elijah. But what are we talking about here? When we're talking about prophecy, what we're really talking about is a, is a, is a message a word that, that God gives you, it comes from God, a message or a word that God gives you, and you kind of feel him calling you to share it with somebody. Maybe you, call, maybe you feel God calling you to share a message of encouragement uh, to somebody at the church. Maybe you feel God calling you to, to speak a word of truth to your Sunday school class or to your ministry team. Maybe you kind of just, just feel a word from God to, to speak to the church. That's what, that's what prophecy is. Um, and, uh, Someone, uh, you know, someone a few months ago, someone a few months ago came to me, and we, we've been dealing with a lot this past 18 months, but somebody came to me a few months ago, and they just, they, they said, I, I just feel like God has just kind of given me this message for the church that we need to be regularly and consistently in prayer. You know, there's so much going on right now, and there's so much going on this last 18 months, right, in our world. And someone came to me, they said, you know, I just feel from God, I felt like this for a while, that we just, as a church, we just need to, to gather and pray regularly and pray consistently and be devoted to prayer because there's just so many attacks around us right now. 
And I look at that and I think, wow, that was a word of prophecy. You know, this is what, this is what God has called us to do. So that's what prophecy is. It's, it's a word of encouragement, a word of hope, maybe sometimes a word of caution, a word of caution. Um, but that's a prophecy right there. Not that you're some all-knowing, infallible prophet. Prophecy always comes from God. By the way, it's not your opinion on something. You know, we're not talking about your personal opinion on something, because some people like to give their personal opinion. That's not prophecy. That's just your personal opinion, you know? Prophecy comes from God. It comes through prayer. It's verified by the church leaders, and it's a message that God gives to the church. That's what that means. So sometimes God speaks, you kind of feel like this from God, and, and maybe God's called you just to speak a word of encouragement to an individual, a word of truth or caution to an individual, or maybe it's to your church. That's what that means. The Bible says here, if God gives you that message, it takes faith, but out of faith, you should share it because God has given that to you. Okay, that's what that means. And remember, it comes from God. It doesn't come from you. All right, let's continue on in verse 7. Here's what verse 7 says. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. I believe that God gives many of us the gift of serving. And really, to some extent, God has given all of us the gift of serving. I don't think there's anybody that just doesn't, you know, where God says, I don't want you to serve. You know, I think to some extent, God gives everybody the gift of serving. But specifically, there are some people who really find joy and satisfaction in, hel in helping people out, in laboring for the church and, and serving the church. And so maybe you've been given the gift of serving others. And that's really what we're talking about today. That's really what we're talking about, serving the church. God works in our lives as we use our spiritual gifts to serve the church. God grows us closer to him. God makes us more like Jesus. God reveals, uh, God reveals him, himself to us as we serve, as we get involved, as we use those spiritual gifts that God has given us to benefit the church. Just like prayer, just like reading scripture, when we get involved, when we serve, when we volunteer, when we use those spiritual gifts, God uses it to not only benefit the church, but he fills us with joy. He teaches us. He grows us closer to him when we obey him through that. You know, there's been a lot of research done lately that points to the fact that when somebody feels like they belong to the church, when they, like they belong to a church, then the, the belief in Christianity follows. I've seen that a lot in research. When somebody feels like they belong at this church, maybe they're an atheist, maybe they're searching, but when they feel like they belong, the belief in Christianity often follows. Sometimes we get it backwards. Sometimes we kind of expect people to come to a Christian faith, and then they go out and they look for a church and they find a church. But often, this is so true, often the way that we see God work, somebody comes to church, they're searching, they're not a Christian, they get involved, they feel like, hey, this is a church family I'm a part of. They hear God's word in church, they start to believe. God works in their life, they start to believe in Jesus. And I've seen it happen all the time. A self-proclaimed atheist. And they may call themselves an atheist, but God knows they're a future Christian, right? A self-proclaimed atheist will come to your church, will come to our church. Why are they there? Because you invited them. Praise God. Maybe, hey, maybe they'll make some friends. Maybe they'll feel welcome because we're loving. Maybe they'll feel welcome. They'll make some friends. Maybe they'll just kind of get involved, caring, you know, helping set up for an event or, or helping out in a certain way around the church, you know, and, and, and then they start coming week in and week out. And I had this happen before, and I said, I thought you were an atheist. And they said, well, actually, I'm searching, but actually, I'm starting to really find it exciting to be here at the church. And I really am starting to think that this whole Christianity thing may actually be true. You know, God, that's how God works oftentimes. That's how God works. God works in our life when we get involved. God grows our faith when we get involved. That's true. That's true. So the Bible says here in verse 7, God has given us, uh, God has, uh, if your gift is serving others, if God has given you that gift, then, then serve them well. If you are a teacher, it says here, if you are a teacher, then teach well. God has called some of you to be teachers. 
God has called some of you to be assistant teachers. If that's your gift, if that's your passion, if that's what you're good at, that's how God has blessed you with, try to get involved. Try to get involved. Let's move to verse 8. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. Okay, so some people really do. Some people have the gift and passion. They just want to encourage people. Anybody like that? You just want to show encouragement to people. I know there's a lot of you like that. You're just not raising your hands, you know. And if you feel like you have that gift and passion, God says to use it. If, if, you, if you really love encouraging people, if you really feel passionate about sharing that encouragement with others, the Bible says here to, to do it. Be as encouraging as possible. Encourage as many people as possible. If it is giving, moving on here, if it is giving, give generously. God has wired some people, God has wired some of you, you love to give. You're generous, you love to give. And again, I think all of us are called to give, right? We all have the gift of giving. To some extent, that's what God has called us to do. But, some, but for some of you, God is really just, you, you're a giver. You love to give. They just love giving. That's how you're wired. The Bible says here to keep on giving, to give generously. Moving on, if, if God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. Some people are leaders. God has wired you that way. God has given you that passion. We're not talking about people who love to be in charge, right? Because sometimes there's people that love to be in charge, but they're really bad leaders, right? We don't want them leading any ministries, right? But some of you, you're very humble. Some of you, God has given you a very uh, clear leadership ability, and you're humble about it. And we remember the words of Jesus where, he, when, you know, he tells us that uh, the first shall become last. If you want to be a leader, then you are a servant, right? Because that's real leadership. Real leadership, you take a lot of heat sometimes. When you're a leader, you have to deal with unpleasant situations sometimes. But some of you, God has called you to be leaders. God has given you that ability. And if that's you, take it seriously and ask God, how can I use this to benefit the church? Moving on. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Some people are very gracious. They're very understanding. They're very kind. We're all called to kindness, right? But some people, God has really given them the gift to, to show compassion towards anybody in any situation. And if God has given you that gift, please use it for the church. You know, people come to church all the time and they just need some compassion. They just need some kindness. They just need some grace. And not all of us are the best at that, let's be honest. But some of you, God has really given you that gift. And the Bible says to you, if you have that gift, then, then do it. Then show it. Then be intentional to show kindness. Be intentional to show grace. Okay, so looking at Romans 12 here, we just read verses 6 through 8, but let's hit the rewind button. We're going to go back to verses 4 and 5, okay? So it kind of explains what we're talking about here in verses 6 through 8. And here's what the Bible says in verses 4 through 5. It says, Just as our bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. So the analogy here is a body. And let's be honest, our legs are way different than our mouth, right? But if we want to get nourished, if we want to be able to walk to where there's water or walk to where there's food, we need our legs. But we need more than our legs because we can't drink water, we can't eat food without our mouth, right? But our legs and our mouth are totally different, but we need each other. And that's how it is with the church, isn't it? That's how it is with the church. In the same way, the church, and, and really any organization, but the church especially, there's all sorts of different types of people. It's required working together for the benefit of the church. We have so many different areas people at the church serve. So many different areas. And God has wired each of us differently. And we need everybody. We really do. We need everybody. We need everybody to get involved, to really go where God's calling us to go. Everybody needs to be involved. You have to work together. 
And that's why serving and volunteering in the church is so important. And so at a philosophical level here, the Bible tells us that we all need to be serving in some way. Does it doesn't mean we all have to, you know, spend tons of tons of hours and tons of time volunteering. It just means that God has given each of you in here a gift or multiple gifts, and we are called to be intentional to use those gifts to benefit the church because not only does it benefit the church, it benefits you. God works in your life just like prayer, just like reading scripture. God works in your life as you serve in the church. God uses that to grow you closer to Jesus, to develop you as a Christian. You know, I've been doing some ab workouts lately. Anybody do ab workouts? You know, a lot of people, they like to work out their legs. They like to run and work out their legs, or they like to go to the gym and, and lift dumbbells to get big biceps and stuff. But it doesn't seem like a lot of people like to work their abs. But you know what the truth is? Your abs and your whole core it actually supports your whole body. Isn't that true? It actually supports your whole body. So it might feel like your legs and your arms get everything done throughout the day, but what would happen if you didn't have abs? It couldn't do anything because there'd be nothing to support the rest of your body. You know, and, and there's folks in church, and there's folks that tell me all the time, they get to a certain age, you know, they get to a certain physical condition like we all do, and they say, they come to me and they say, I feel so bad that I, I can't help at this event. I feel so bad that I can't help set up. I, I, I feel so bad that I can't serve in this area because physically my body's just not there anymore. I did it 10 years ago, but physically I've come to a point where my body just can't do it anymore. They tell me that. And I say, well, you don't need to feel bad because you are serving in ways that are so important. You're a prayer warrior. You're somebody who prays every day for the church. Huge, you know. You're somebody who faithfully gives, faithfully supports the church week in and week out. That's huge. And without those people, without those people, this is the truth, the church would not survive. God uses those people as the core, the backbone of the church through prayer, through giving, through financial support. There's so many people in the church, maybe physically they can't move stuff, you know, as quick as, as younger people or whatever, but God uses everybody. God uses everybody to move this church forward. And so I have people come to me and say that, and it's simply not true. It's simply not true. God has given each of us different spiritual gifts, and he's called us to use those in the life of the church. And I, I'm not trying to pressure anybody, but if you're not yet involved here at Mosaic Church, we'd love for you to get involved. We'd love for you to get involved. And like we said before, if you go to our website, and of course you can come talk to me if you want to get involved, but just to make it easier and more accessible, if you go to our website, there's a big volunteer button at the top. If you click it, you can fill out your name, your contact info, maybe some of the areas that, that you feel like you want to serve in, and you hit submit, and it sends us an email, and then we get in touch with you. We just want to make serving the church, getting involved in the church as accessible as possible. Because the truth is, sometimes you go into a church and you see everything functioning, you're like, well, there's nothing to do here. And that's far from the truth, right? Those of us involved, we know it's far from the truth. But uh, we just want to make it as easy as possible to get involved here. Because I'm so convinced that as we serve, that as we get involved, that as we use those spiritual gifts, not only does God benefit the church through that, God works in our lives through that. And if we're, not, if we're not involved, if we're not using our gifts, we're missing out on the joy, on the growth that God gives us. And so that's the big message for today. We've been kind of going through this series talking about different, different spiritual practices, different spiritual habits that, that we do, like, like prayer, like reading scripture, that we do, that God uses to work in our lives. And it's just like prayer and reading scripture, serving using those spiritual gifts that God has given you, not only is it very biblical, but it's also something that God uses to work in our lives, to grow us closer to him, to develop us as Christians, and to move us forward spiritually. Let's pray. Father, we bow before you this morning, God, and we give you thanks. We thank you, God, for blessing us with such a wonderful church, God. And I pray, God, you know, if there's somebody here this morning and, and we don't... 
we don't want to pressure anybody, God, but we know that sometimes you call us. And if there's somebody here this morning, God, that's on the edge of getting involved and serving, God, I pray if, it's, if you're calling them that you'd give them the boldness to do so, Lord. God, remind us this week that it takes everybody, that you have designed this church like a body. You've designed it that way. That's not our design. That's your design. And all of us, whether we like it or not, are different body parts. And we all have to use our spiritual gifts and abilities if we want to see this church fully thrive. God, lead us if we're not already involved. Lead us, God. Lead us in your timing, God. Lead us to get involved, to serve, to use those gifts and abilities that you've already given us, those spiritual gifts that you've already given us, to use those to benefit the church and to grow your kingdom. God, instill that passion within us. Holy Spirit, be at work in our lives, God. And I pray that that this church, that as we serve, as we volunteer, as we use those spiritual gifts, God, I pray that you would continue to grow us closer to you through that. Grow us closer to you through that, God. Fill us with joy as we serve. Fill us with joy, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship.
you stand for our benediction then we'll be dismissed this morning go now and follow jesus in the way of the cross rejoice in hope hold fast to what is good persevere in prayer do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good as far as is possible live peaceably with all and may god hear your cries and deliver you may christ jesus repay you with fullness of life and may the Holy Spirit be with you always, nourishing you in hope and love. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.